The many drummers of Ice on Fire, the Elton John album that was supposed to be his biggest, and a comeback for him and Gus Dudgeon. His 1970s producer, Stuart Epps, who engineered the album, on Rock History Music. Nigel's the king of less is more. He was, he didn't try to, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm more of a Roger type of drummer. I like that that very uh, personally, but for Elton, Nigel really, you know, he was perfect. Like that fill on Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, like to this day, I look at it, I'm going, God, that's that's not a lot, but it's so perfect. It just The thing is that Elton is doing those songs now. So they have had other drummers, but how can you better the guy that played on the original and who played so brilliantly? That's the thing. So they've had other drummers. There was a drummer there that um, that Elton, um, I think he was in McCartney's band. I can't remember his name. But um, then there was Charlie Morgan as well. Yeah. Char well, you see, what happened there was that's not a bad story. You've reminded me because when we did um, Ice on Fire, um, I don't think I can't think why. But there wasn't a there wasn't a drummer in the band. I can't think how that could have been, but there wasn't one. So on Ice on Fire, we had lots of drummers, you know, because actually he used lots of different musicians. So we had um, we had Charlie Morgan, we had Dave Mattox, uh, we had the drummer from Simple Minds, and we had the drummer from Queen. <laughs> Believe it. Or Roger. Not. Yeah, they're all on. They're all on that Ice on Fire album. So there was like a vying for who was going to be the drummer in the band. And I, and I thought, I think we all thought it would probably be Dave Mattox because he, I think I just imagined that his drumming, if you got if you haven't got Popey, if you haven't got Nigel for some reason, Dave Mattox for me has always been like amazing drummer. I mean, he's, he's, he's worse than less is more. He's like nothing at all. But his feel is incredible. And if you push him, he might do a fill somewhere or other. If you pay him a bit more, I think that's what it is. Because he, I've talked to him about that. He was so fed up with coming in, sitting there, doing what he thought. Because let's face it, Fairport Convention, the, dr the drumming on that was out of this world. You know, he was all over the place. So when he started doing sessions and he's doing all that, and then they're going, well, can you miss that one out and, and don't do the fill there? And, and then he's realized all oh, they want is effing bass drum and snare and I have. So I'll do that. And if they want to fill, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in as an extra. Or what used to happen with Mattox is he'd start doing fills on the fade. You know, when it got to the end, the last chorus, he'd start doing all these fills. And Gus would say, you know what you're doing at the end there? You couldn't put it in after the... <laughs> couldn't bring it in a bit earlier could you and all this but i love dave mattox you know you, is it do you know you know his stuff at all yes yeah well my, my son's a, a much better drummer than i am and uh, uh he follows all he's always telling me about drummers left right and center so the other story is that you'll like this story because this is all this is all uh, no one else knows this or very few so the other thing is that there's this guy comes in charlie morgan right I don't know where he came from. I don't. I guess Gus must have known. I don't know where he came from. Anyway, at one point he comes up to me. He says, "Everyone keeps asking about my dad," and I said, to, "He said, why are they doing that?" And he said, "Well, it's Barry Morgan, isn't it?" And he said, "No. <laughs> we just assume because his name's Morgan, and he's a drummer. His dad must have been Barry Morgan, who was this phenomenal session guy that was." I said, "Oh." He said, no, no, my dad's called Jim or something. I don't know. But, um, but the thing is that, yeah, admittedly, Charlie Morgan, great drummer, but he was also a great talker. And he talked himself into the band, to be honest, because he was, he's sort of, well, he's very affable anyway. And he, him, I've talked to him. I've interviewed him twice. Ah, there you go. Yeah. So he, him and Elton just, because Elton's, you know, uh, well, he's he's the personality he is, and and Charlie just you know they just got on. So when it came to the next tour, it was like who's the drummer? Charlie Morgan. But he was he was in that band for about ten years, fifteen years. Yeah. yeah. In fact, it was only his this that got him out of it, I think, because he used to talk maybe a little bit too much for a drummer. I know he drummers can work... aren't supposed to. They're not supposed to talk, you know. I know uh, we worked with Kate Bush and Nick Kershaw. 
you talked about that. Wishbone Ash, a band that that wasn't that that wasn't that well known. They weren't like a Deep Purple or something. That's a band that I always thought would become bigger in North America. But you worked with them, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, at the mill uh, during the Jimmy Page era, I don't know. I think I did know their manager. I think it was John Sherry thinking about it. And they'd already done quite a lot of work on it. And I wasn't, I didn't really know much about them at all. Yeah. I, I can't think, I probably maybe, I never even heard them or, or might have heard them and didn't know who it was. And they came in with all this material and they were straight away great guys. Straight away. I mean, they also... They also had the two members that I really remember is um, the bass player, who's Trevor Boulder, who wasn't in an original lineup, but Trevor Boulder was this guy with his hair down here, and he, was, he wasn't exactly a youngster, but he was an extremely nice guy. I mean, he was in the Spiders of Mars with, I didn't know this, but he was in David Bowie's band, and, you know, but he's such a nice guy. And also um, the guitarist on that album... Laurie Wisefield, he wasn't in the original lineup either. And he played with Tina Turner. I can't remember his name. But anyway, he was equally a brilliant guy, an amazing guitarist. And the tracks we did, the album we did was called Twin Barrels Burning. And I loved it. I loved it. I, I more or less just mixed it all, to be honest. But he was just an amazing guitarist. And, and we had a ball anyway. So I always, I, and, and I did know the manager from years before. And uh, um, yeah, we had a great time. We'll have more from Stuart Epps coming up the next few days. Remember, he produced so many people, engineered a lot of people. He was the engineer on the Coda album with Jimmy Page. Worked with The Firm, Twisted Sister, Elton John, Paul Rogers, Jimmy Page, and a host of others. If you want to get produced by him, he is available. Go to his website, stuartepps.co.uk. Remember, subscribe to our channel. We always love it when you join our team, like our videos, spread the word, spread the videos on social media, and comment on them as well. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. 